This program is sponsored by the Church of God International and supported by our viewers. What happens to you after death has intrigued mankind throughout the ages. Stories about vampires like Dracula, the Blade, Twilight, or Dark Shadows, even the zombie craze like The Walking Dead or World War Z are all illustrations of our fascination with immortality. However, mankind's hope to live forever is a natural proclivity, a healthy desire. Most religions are centered around some type of promise about becoming immortal, living forever. But the Bible, it has a very different message. It is about a resurrection back to life, but not as a zombie or a vampire. No, no, instead, it's quite a different concept compared to the traditional belief of going to heaven. So stay with us as we explore this question about immortality on today's program. In times like these, we need the armor of God for the well-being of our families, to help you stand in the evil day. The Church of God International presents Armor of God, a program of biblical understanding. And now your host, Tony Bukert. Well, hello there, friends, and welcome to another edition of the Armor of God. And I'm sure you would agree, after watching today's introduction to the program, that we have quite an interesting program to offer you today. So I hope you can stick around and join us for the duration of the program. However, before I get into the topic of zombies, because I'm still trying to get those images of those resurrected corpse, corpses walking around in the earth, getting ready to perpetrate whatever mischief they're getting ready to perpetrate, I'm trying to get those out of my mind. And before I get into the main heart of the topic, I want to show you a principle that we here at the Armor of God try our best to follow as we offer you solutions to troubles in the world from the Bible, as we, we do our best to sometimes hit some topics that may hit too close to home, and we like to do so the best we can in a non-judgmental way. And I want to introduce you to the principle that we do our best to follow anytime that we, well, we present a program. And we find the principle in Romans chapter 14, and I'm just going to begin here reading in verse, well, let's just start here and verse 7. And we're just going to go down through, let's just say 13 here. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother, or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge, and really what the word means judge, judge here is really means condemn, let us not condemn one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not putting a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Now, looking at today's topic, I'm sure it might hit close to home because unless we've been hiding under a rock somewhere, it is absolutely impossible to ignore this zombie craze that is going on in our culture. And even if my face might be a little bit red, I have to admit that, you know, even I have uh, <laughs> turned from time to time to, to these TV programs that are on about zombies, and I've, I've watched them myself. So please understand from the point that I come from today, it's, it's non-judgmental. I'm speaking from a place in which I get the opportunity to speak to people who have never heard the truth about life and death and what happens when we die, or to those of us out there who might uh, have care over young, impressionable minds that are exposed to these things day in and day out, never having the truth to compare it to, and thereby causing a lot of confusion 
in their mind. Some of these these kids that are you know younger kids can't discern fact from fiction, and thereby you know therefore some of these programs that are on TV can be dangerous to a young impressionable mind. So we at least have to offer them the opportunity to hear the truth about life after death and not leave them the impression with uh, the idea that they're going to come up out of the grave a grotesque cannibalistic monster uh, that causes fear. So we need to put them at ease in regards to some of these things that are going on in our society. It is quite a craze. Most of you uh, may remember, or at least a lot of you may remember, back in the 1980s when Michael Jackson came out with his music video, Thriller in which he had all these dancing zombies, these grotesque faces, eyeballs falling out of sockets, skin peeling out of the face. Some people didn't have arms. You know, some people were limping, their clothes were ragged. Obviously, they just came up out of the grave. And what an image that put in our minds and what an impression it had on us because we can remember it to this very day. Well, the Bible does have a lot of things to say about life and death, and it gives us a lot of assurances so that we don't have to fear what's going to happen to us when we die. So it's going to go a long way to correcting some of the, oh, the misunderstandings that are out there in society about life and death. And I'm going to get into some things that Jesus said here. However, I want to interrupt the program just for a second and introduce us to some items that we want to make available to you today. The items that we have available to you today um, are, uh, is a booklet, first and foremost, it's uh, titled, Immortality, God's Gift to the Saint. Most people have never heard the truth about immortality, when it comes, the mode by which God brings it to us, and Jesus Christ, the one who is the forerunner and the template. You know, if you ever want to know what happens when we die and, and what's waiting on the other side, we really need to turn no further than Jesus Christ, for example. You know, Jesus didn't go off to heaven. Uh, he, he didn't go off uh, in, into hell. He went into the grave and he died and he was resurrected three days and three nights later. And in addition to the booklet, there's another item I'd like to bring your attention to. And it is a CD that is a, a titled, What Happens When You Die? Boy, is there any age-old question that goes back any further than that philosophical question of what happens when we die, is there not enough confusion out there? I mean, you have so many different religions to choose from. What makes Christianity different? Now, we'll get into that here in just a little bit. But if we get these, you all get these uh, offerings, it'll go a long way to correcting some of these misconceptions that are out there and assure us that we do have a very wonderful, miraculous future that God wants to offer to those who accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior uh, the gift of immortality, the truth about what happens when we die. You can get these items that we want to make available to you by simply calling 888-578-8791. Again, that's 888-578-8791. And if you prefer to access us through the web, you can do so by going to www cgi.org and perhaps today's program or one of the previous programs might bring some questions to your mind and you can hit us up at info at cgi.org and while you're there you might be interested in taking note that we do have a webcast that goes out every Saturday now the times are going to be listed on the website so if you want to take uh, you know advantage of that also please do so but the times will be listed on the website now before we went into the literature offering, we were talking about zombies and uh, the culture in which we live in, how it is, seems to be inundated and preoccupied with death, and it seems to ask more questions than it provides answers to, that question of what happens when you die. What is on the other side of this physical life? I mean, do we keep on living? Uh, after the body dies, as some astral body going off to heaven if we've been good, hell if we've been bad, or we to go to a place in an interim waiting for the judgment, a place called paradise, waiting to be reanimated or reunited with our bodies, and then we go to heaven and then we go to hell, or whatever the case may be. Um, we were talking about that, and I was going to bring your attention to some of the things that Jesus said. So to get to what he said about this, let's turn over to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, just a few verses here.
Now I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version, so it might be a little bit different from the one that you're reading or might read later. Um, but it's still the context is going to be the same here. In verse 18, we see this question, this age-old question, this timeless question of life and death and what happens to us when we die. Uh, then some of the Sadducees, in verse 18, say there is no resurrection, came to him, and they ask him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and dying left no offspring. The second took her. He died, nor did he leave any offspring. And the third likewise. So the seven had her and left no offspring. Last of all the women died also. So everybody dies. And now there's this question of what, what, what happens? What happens to, to, to these women who, who, who were, the, you know, were the wives and, and so on? Or the wife that was, you know, the lady that was a wife to all these, these men. And Jesus answered and said to them, Are you not therefore mistaken because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God? And herein lies the answer to the resurrection and who actually has power to resurrect somebody. It is God and God alone, as we'll see that here in just a few minutes. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. But concerning the dead, that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses and the burning bush passages how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, and of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly mistaken. So even in the days of Jesus Christ, there was a lot of confusion, a lot of questions about what was going on, uh, or related to rather, what happens when we die and what's, what's on the other side. The Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. Um, the Pharisees did. So there was a, a lot of disagreement between the two. But the point is that there were questions being asked of Jesus about life and death and what happens. I mean, what happens after all this? Well, he did in fact say a lot, and the Bible does give us a lot of answers to what happens when we die. And perhaps you've never heard it put the way that I'm going to, going to put it now, or the, maybe the way that the Bible puts it. But the Bible does offer us a lot of comfort. You know, when you get these pictures and these images of these zombies, and we don't have the truth to compare of what really happens to us, and you add into the fact that most people are uh, detached or unaware of what happens when we die, you can see how this con confusion can just really steamroll, so to speak, or, or snowball out of, out of kilter and out of control, thereby leaving a lot of people confused and with more questions and answers. Well, back in the book of Ecclesiastes, and I'm not going to go through all the scriptures, um, though, a lot of these scriptures are going to be in the offerings that we made available to you today. You can peruse those at your at your leisure, it talks about the dead. The living know that they will, they will die. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 is, a, is the scripture I'm referencing. But the dead know nothing. There is no memory. There is no love. There is no hatred. There is no envy. For the memory of them is forgotten. That's Ecclesiastes 9 verses 3 through 6. If you want to look that up some other time. Now that's a little bit of an archaic way of expressing the truth. Now, really what's being said there is that the dead know nothing. They have no thoughts. They have no consciousness. They have no being. They are simply unconscious. And the Bible describes death as a means, uh, or compares it to, by way of analogy, sleep, if you will. And at a future date, God will resurrect uh, mankind at one point or another. However, the images being portrayed on TV is not even close to the truth. The images that are being placed on TV of these, these zombies, these animated bodies who have been in the grave uh, who knows how long, a day, a week, 20 years, 100 years, whatever, coming up out of the grave with these grotesque faces and this macabre appearance to them, coming up out of the ground committing evil deeds, cannibalism, 
all these different things, causing just all kinds of chaos in the streets. You know, it might seem just like an innocent thing or an innocent little escape from reality uh, to, to view a lot of these, these TV programs um, on zombies and things like that. But really, there really is a spiritual conspiracy behind all this that I want to bring to your attention. Now, to those of us who, who have the ability to discern truth from fiction, unlike a child who can't oftentimes discern truth from, from fiction, uh, that's a little bit different. But we need to be able to supply people with the truth so they have something to compare it to at least. There's a danger in leaving people to, to believe that these images are the reality, you know, these images of these zombies and these, these decaying bodies is what God has planned for us. What does that do than, other than further propel the fear and the uncertainty about death and what happens to us. Well, there is a very interesting history in America concerning zombies. And really, when it comes down to it, you know the history of zombies um, has a long line of history of evolution, how it's changed through the course of time in America. It really began uh, back in the 1700s uh, up into the 1800s um, with, uh, with slavery. Uh, because Haitian slaves brought this, this idea of uh, witchcraft and uh, some people call it black magic or lower magic. Um, the use uh, of, of sorcerers that had the power to put people in the grave and then resurrect them up from the dead at their will uh, to do their, their biddings, their, their evil biddings on people, uh, however they, they chose to do so. It came over from Haiti, and later on as, as the, the Haitian slaves made their way down to Louisiana, there became uh, at, the, at a rise a new religion called Voodoo, which is really Haitian Creole uh, Catholicism, or was a mixture of Catholicism and Haitian Voodoo, or Haitian beliefs, uh, witchcraft, okay? So over time, this has evolved to to even uh, help to explain some of the political things that are going on in our world. You know, it really didn't take off uh, this voodoo craze until, pro voodoo craze, but the zombie craze rather, until probably, I would say, according to, according to what the history says here, the 1930s is when it really took off. Back in the 1930s, you know, you see the, in the invention of certain technologies um, people were able to, able to see silent movies and these kind of things. And with the invention of these silent movies, people were able to see for the first time on TV screens these grotesque images of these creatures called zombies, and it kind of propelled from there. Now, lending credence to this was an author. Uh, she wrote a book called Tell My Horse. Her name was Zora Neale Hurston. Uh, called Tell My Horse and it exposed the Haitian Creole voodoo practices of, of the lower black or dark magic, the evil magic, and this kind of propelled the movie industry to write more and more movies about these things called zombies because people were fascinated with, with, with these things. It seems that people are fascinated with supposed ancient religions that have some secret information about what happens to us when we die. It's like they look at some of these ancient cultures, supposed ancient cultures, and they think that they have the answers to life after death, and people become fascinated by them. We're taught all these cultures in schools. Uh, there's whole uh, degrees and colleges based on uh, studying these ancient cultures, and people really have their faith in these ancient cultures to describe to us what happens when we die, and they have the answers to life. Well, friends, the truth of the matter is there is no more ancient information regarding what happens to us when we die what we are, then the Holy Scriptures here, the Bible. You see, the Bible is quite a unique set of documents, or series of documents, if you will. It's not really just a book. It's a series of books, a collection of books, 66 to be exact, in which we bifurcate the, these books into the Old Testament and the New Testament. And in the Scriptures, there is an account that gives us an insight into the spiritual conspiracy 
that is really behind all these things that are, that are going on in the TV and, and the websites and, and all these different things that are bombarding our minds every day, what's really behind it? Here just a while ago, I think the craze is dying out now, but some of you may remember that, that some of our children were just fascinated with Harry Potter, fascinated with this supposed white magic, this supposed higher magic as it is, this higher, this good form, as they put it, of witchcraft. Well, you know, there is a danger in putting these things in our, in our kids' minds because I tell you, you know, what we don't consider is oftentimes that when people do TV programs on Harry Potter or movies on Harry Potter and do a series, you know that they consult, or on zombies even, they consult real witches, they use real incantations, they use real spells in the books and the movies. You know why? Because they want authenticity. So what's behind all of this? What are we looking at here? What, what is the spiritual conspiracy and, and where did it begin? Well, as a Near Eastern document, brethren or friends, we can see that how this idea of immortality and life after death expanded from this area around the Mediterranean. Let's go over to Genesis, the book of Genesis real quick, just for a, a couple short scriptures and see where all this deception began. And all this confusion about life and death and what happens to us when we die, who is behind it? Why is it a little bit more sinister than what we think it might be on the surface? Well, back here in the book of Genesis, we will go over uh, to verse or chapter 3 here, and just for a few short verses. Now the serpent, that is the Nahash, this whispering enchanter, this deceiving agent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of the tree, uh, every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows in that day that you will eat it and your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, what is the lie that Satan told mankind all the way back in the beginning? That you're not going to die, that you're going to have immortality. Because what is God? God is spirit. God can't die because he's immortal, right? That is the first lie. And we can actually prove through uh, the, uh, looking at the, the area of Mesopotamia and how religion spread throughout that area, how the idea of immortality and the truth about, or the lie about what happens to us when we die, spread out from that central location, okay? You know, there are some people out there now uh, in, the, in the world of the atheist that are actually going around and making a mockery of Jesus Christ and saying that, you know, he is a zombie. Now you take a look at this and you see that they're turning the resurrection into a mockery. It's look, they're looking at it as something to be feared. It's being presented as something that is evil and God said it is not. God says it's something that we should attain to. It's something that we should aspire for. We should live our life in hopes of. Now who's going to do that if the only image that they get of the resurrection is the macabre, the evil, uh, these rotten corpses walking around, eating human brains, is cannibalistic, these appearances, it does nothing but cast a shadow and puts a veil over the truth. Now, we have to ask ourselves a question because the assumption is that these voodoo uh, sorcerers have the power to resurrect somebody. You know, that is a power that resides with God and God alone. Because if God allowed anybody to have the power of resurrection, other than God, do you realize what that would do to the ministry of Jesus? You'll never find an example in the scriptures of anybody but God, one of his prophets, or one of his disciples having the power to resurrect somebody. That is it. You never see that power assigned to Satan. Why is that? Over here in Matthew chapter 12, I'm going to leave you with a, a set of scriptures here and to show you how dangerous it is to assign the power of resurrection to anybody other than God, because what happens is we would call into question even the ministry of Jesus Christ. You remember the time when he resurrected Lazarus, when he said, Lazarus, come forth. Now, Lazarus was dead for at least three days, maybe four. 
And Jesus said, take away the stone. And, they, and his disciples said, no, Lord, because surely he stinketh by now. What if people could assign the power of resurrection to Satan? What would that do to Christ's ministry? What would they say? Who really resurrected him? God or Satan? It would therefore just slander the ministry of Christ. And there in Matthew chapter 12, it would also call us to, cause us to question Jesus Christ himself because he made us a promise here in verse 38 of Matthew 12. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. No sign shall be given to it except the sign of Jonah prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This is the only sign that Jesus gave to mankind. That's not called him and his credibility into question. Now friends, I'm going to turn the last few moments over to this, over to my colleague. But until then, remember, let us all keep on God's armor that we all might be able to stand in this evil day. Wow, what a program Tony had for us today. Zombies and werewolves and vampires, they're all front and center stage today with so many programs all over television and the internet. Unfortunately, these programs though misdirect and misguide the proper understanding about these two very important elements of God's truth that are fundamental and underscore God's whole purpose for mankind as Tony pointed out, that of life after death and the resurrection. These teachings that come from and meanings that come from and misconceptions that come from so many of these programs are rooted in rank paganism, my friends, heathenistic teachings that do nothing but give the wrong impression about these two very important elements of God's truth, life after death and the resurrection. The Bible's clear very clear about these two items. But this nefarious demon called Satan the devil, he has been working an agenda for about the last 6,000 years, undermining, undercutting, doing everything he can to confuse God's message. As a matter of fact, you can read a little bit about his history over there in Isaiah chapter 14 if you want to gain a little insight about him. Won't you let us help you to better understand the true meaning about life after death and the resurrection? Dial now, 888 Ask the operator for both of these free offers that we're presenting to you on today's program. Immortality, God's gift to the saints, and a one hour presentation from one of our own colleagues right here on the Armor of God, Mr. Bronson James. What happens when you die? Both are free for the asking. All you've got to do is dial that 888 8791 number as well as hit us on that website at CGI.org. My friends, this is Bill Watson reminding all of you, you keep on that Armor of God so that you may be able to stand in this evil day. Armor of God and the free material offered is brought to you by the Church of God International of Tyler, Texas. You may write to us at 3900 Thames Street, Tyler, Texas 75701 or call toll free at 1-888-578-8791 or call one 939 2929 during regular business hours. You may visit our website at www.cgi.org or email us at armorofgodcgi.org. We appreciate your prayers and support.